Hi everyone, and welcome back to another Bloomhost tutorial video. Today we're looking at MySQL databases and how to use them. MySQL databases are typically used when you want an efficient way to store and look up large amounts of data. So for example, if you were using like a logging plugin and a rollback plugin like CorProtect, or a maps plugin like DINMAP or BlueMap, or plugins that communicate between multiple servers that you have, like a bands plugin. You typically want to store the data that these plugins provide in a MySQL database so that you can look them up faster. Another perk of these databases are that they don't contribute to your server's storage limit on Bloom, with the exception of if you have a dedicated server through Bloom. So I'm over here in the databases tab of our duck panel, and we have no databases yet, but let's create one by clicking new database. Up here we can give the database a name, so I'll just give it test database. And then down here we can specify where the connections to the database should be allowed from. Typically we recommend keeping it at this percent sign. This allows all IP addresses to connect to and read and write to and from the database. And then we can just click create database here. And now we can see we have our database set up we can see the host and the port number, the username of the database, and the size of the database. And then if we click show connection details here, we can see a few more details, including the password of the database, the JDBC connection string. This is just how Bloom connects to the database. And then we can also click rotate password down here if we ever wanted to change the password of the database. Okay, let's look at some more options here. Over here, we can click export database. This will dump the database to a local SQL file in your file manager. This option here, import database, will allow us to confirm a database import from a remote database. You have to enter the remote username, the remote password, the remote host name, which could be something like test.bloom.host, the remote port number, and the remote database's name, and by clicking import database, this will copy the external database to your current MySQL database. I'm going to skip over import database from a file for now. What this allows you to do is do the same thing as import database does, but just from a file from your Bloom file manager. If we click clear database, which clears the contents of the database, or if we click delete database, which removes the database entirely, we have to enter the database's name in here just to prevent accidental clearing or deletion of the database contents. Now let's talk about how to import an SQL database dump through the file manager. This is just another way of importing data to an SQL database. Down here in my file manager, I have a .sql database file. And if we click on the three dots on the right, we can see an import to database option. By clicking on this, we can select the destination database to import the files to. Keep in mind that this will permanently replace the files in the current database with the data from the SQL file that you're importing. So let's just click import. And now the files from this SQL database dump are in our current MySQL database. Sometimes certain things about your SQL file aren't compatible with Bloom's database importing process. It could be how the database dump was made or just other encoding or formatting issues. If you get an error when importing the database through the method that we just described, you can try to import the dump through a program called Heidi SQL, which I have pulled up here. In order to import the dump through Heidi SQL to your Bloom database, we first need to connect to the database. So leave network type and library as such here. First, we need the host name and IP. So we need to just import our bloom.host address without the port, because we'll keep the port down here at the default 3306. Then we need the username and the password. And then we can click open. If you get a pop-up to hit save modifications, just click yes. And now we're in our database here. First we need to click on our database, then we need to go to file, run SQL file, and then in your file manager, click on the SQL database dump file that you want to import. I have one here for a test database. Just hit yes if you have a really auto detect file encoding confirmation. And then it'll be processing the queries to import to the database. 
What I've noticed is that you can't see the contents of the database right after an import without a refresh. So come up here and hit the green refresh button. And now you can see the contents of your database in here. The last thing I want to show you in this video is how to convert a plugin's data storage from flat file like H2 or SQLite, which most plugins use by default. Those are just like file storage in your file manager to storing its data in the MySQL databases that you may have set up. So we're using the luckperms config file as a tester here, but the process is pretty much going to be very similar for any sort of plugin config that you come across. So up here in the storage method entry, we want to convert this to MySQL. Check your plugin's config file for exactly what you want to put here for converting to a MySQL database. Then in the data entry here, for address, we need to specify the host and port number of the database. Sometimes you might see a separate port entry here, in which case you would just put the port number and leave this part off of the address section. But we don't have that, so we're putting the host and the port number here. Then under database, we need to put the database name. And then under username and password, we just put the username and password as such. And we'll hit save content. And now the next time you boot up Luckperms, it will use a MySQL database for storage. If you were using flat file file manager storage for your plugin before converting it to using a MySQL database, you'll need to check the wiki of the specific plugin to see whether or not that data will automatically convert into a MySQL format, or if it will just start from that point onward for using the MySQL database for storage. And you can also check if the plugin has any manual conversion processes to help you get your old data onto the MySQL database. That is pretty much it for this tutorial video. If you have any questions about what we covered, either leave them in the comments or join our Discord server, link in the description, and we'll answer those questions there. You can also find a playlist of all Bloomhost tutorial videos in the description as well. And that's it. Thank you for choosing Bloomhost, and we'll see you in the next tutorial video.